Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Lansdowne Oil and Gas, which I mentioned at the weekend, along with its Barry Row partner, Providence Resources, announced its placing £488,000 at 0.6p. Now their target is to complete a farm out deal within the next six months. LOGP is trading at a valuation of eight cents per contingent resource barrel, so the scope for a significant re rating of the farm out comes about. Same, of course, for PBR2. From here, some may think that the commentary is a little negative, but that's purely a function of the companies which have issued news so far this week. I've no agenda here, no position in any of them, and no financial interest in their outcomes. I'm simply commenting on what I see. If you have a problem listening to opinions different to your own, then perhaps you should switch off now. Let's start. Sound Energy announced that the anonymous UK private company, which was previously touted as the purchaser of their assets, doesn't have the funds. No surprises there for readers or listeners. I said in November last year that their sale announcement then had been drafted to make people think the sale of the Morocco assets was a certainty in order to help associated parties sell their shares. It really is a stinker, with the same old people promoting it for money all the way down. SOU is now down to around 3% of the price it was when I first started warning about it. Now the same guy running it, who managed to destroy investors' capital in Echo Energy 2, is off to rescue Ascent Resources. Per the RNS this week, that starts by wiping out the equity of existing shareholders. Next will come the paid promotion from the usual crew, maximum further fundraising, and substantial losses for those foolish enough to believe them. For the sake of completeness, Echo announced yet another non-commercial gas discovery this morning. Sound still got plenty further to fall compared to Anglo-African oil and gas, which now is around just 1% of the price it was when I first started questioning it. But coming up to take its place is Zenith Energy, which I said last weekend must now be the worst company on the market. This one really consumes cash fast. Some companies are criticised for doing two or three fundraising exercises a year. Zen now appears to be doing two or three a week. I suggested at the weekend that people should have a look at the accounts and pointed out on Monday that per the cash flow statement, all the cash raised appears to go in foreign exchange currency losses, which raises the question, what is this company really up to? It's now desperately trying to grab cash every way it possibly can. More on Predator Oil and Gas, which announced its fundraising last Friday. There appear to be a lot of the usual social media pumpers in the placing who will be looking to flip. And it also should be noted that completion of the placing is conditional on approval by the FCA of a prospectus. This will include a competent persons report in respect to the company's interests in Morocco, Trinidad and Ireland, and it may be prudent to await that. Petrotal generates controversy. There's a group of investors, many of the same ones as in RBD and UOG, who consider it one of the best investments ever. Others question the decline rate, which of course the first group deny. PTAL issued a 2019 year-end all reserves and operational update this week, touting large increases in reserve numbers, which is usual when drilling, but no mention at all of declines, which are obvious from the company's own announcements. One of the people promoting it, who has put up a one-page website, says he's done intensive fundamental analysis and produced what's claimed to be a 130-page report, which can be accessed for $239. Unfortunately, it's not all quite as simple as they think. Perhaps read the RNS announcements at the start, when PTAL openly disclosed decline rates. I'm not saying it's that bad a company, just not what some of the more hyperbolic posters are claiming. It's back to where it was price-wise before the big number announcements, which the market now appears not to be giving too much credence to. For capital gains from this point, there are much better companies out there. As I've said before, fundamental analysis is not the most important thing with these small caps anyway. Critical is to understand how the finance and promotion side works. That's why I know what's going on at these companies and where they're likely to go. People ask how I know this stuff. It's simple. I have 40 years experience in the markets from both sides of the fence. If you're interested in knowing my trading ideas, go to allnewslondon.com forward slash allman dash gem. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.